Hello and welcome to a new episode of Computer TLC. It's been a year since the last one where I restored the Commodore VC20. This episode start off in a mysterious way because today we will be talking about a very mysterious computer. The last time you saw it was in a video showcasing it as a new item of my collection. We turned it on and luckily it still worked. We got it to load in the monitor program. In the meantime, I found two very kind fellow retro enthusiasts, one helping me to a bunch of new 8 inch discs and the other being very kind and putting the actual system software on those discs. Also, I discovered thanks to a kind email that the keyboard I got with the computer contains a rare type of clicky switch called Fujitsu Leaf Spring First Generation Clicky. Before we load the specially made MPC 3000 discs, let's remove the hood of this beast of a computer and take a quick look. It's actually very straightforward to disassemble this computer. Whoa, these insides look like they belong on a sort of warship. We have the dual 8 inch drives taking quite a considerable amount of space and a speaker. Here we see the side of the drive with a whole bunch of ICs, the motherboard and power supply. So let's test the discs our kind friends have sent in. The drives appeared to spin up, but the machine kept stuck on the monitor program. I tried loading it a couple more times. Also the lights on the A drive blinked to show that a disc had been loaded. Ok, so the discs don't appear to want to load. Let's enter the DVD menu for this video. We have a bunch of options I want to try, not all in this video, but let's try to fit a couple. So we have the following options. Service those 8 inch drives, look up more information on those drives, new discs, ask for help, install a GoTech, look for other drives. I put some question marks behind the options I am not sure about yet. Let's begin with servicing the drives. Just like the case they are very easy to remove. Got to say that when it comes to serviceability this computer is very well designed. I bet that is because the computer almost requires two human beings to move it. So here we have it, the disk drive. I have to say that this is the most mysterious part of this mysterious unbootable machine. Here's the label, with very nice, I assume Japanese characters. Also a warning about turning and adjusting screw. This is what Google Translate made of it. So it's made by Hitachi. I thought I recognized that logo from somewhere. I want to start with the basics, like lubricating the drive rails. So I screwed off this PCB and disconnected the cables. Then I put some lithium grease on the rails and moved back and forward the reed head. And reconnected the PCB. A lot of ICs on it by the way. And put the drive in the computer again. Then I put the CPM disk in and tried loading it again. Sadly nothing. So let's move to the next option. New discs. Coincidentally the person who made the first batch of discs got in touch again saying he suspected that those discs might not have been written to the discs correctly due to some issues with his 8 inch drive. So he offered to send me two new discs. Something I really appreciate. They arrived pretty fast. He put a sticker to his website on the envelope. I'll make sure to put a link to that in the comment section so you can all go check it out. So here are two new discs, one CPM 2.2 system disc for Senyo MBC 3000, cool, like the label, and awesome, sure, fun to see the actual copyright date. So of course I immediately took them over to the Senyo MBC 3000, put the CPM disc in and tried to load it. Same routine as always, the lights burn but the computer returns to the monitor program. I really think this is because of a fault with the disc drives, since there comes almost no sound from them. I remember finding a page on GitHub a while back of the manual of the monitor program. In it you can find a program that lets you format a disc. So I want to see what happens when I type that in and insert a blank disc. Don't really have a spare 8 inch disc with data laying around I want to format. So I put in a blank disc. <laughs> For safety sake let's remove the new disc. The R command is supposed to read the disc. Well it appears to do that. Then I typed in the machine language program. And 
type the command to start the program. The drive clicks away as you can hear, accompanied by the sound of the loud fan in the back. I also typed in the command that makes the program use drive B instead of drive A. Also this drive spun up. I have tried to swap over the cables from A to B. This did not work. I expect I have to change some jumper settings to accomplish that. Anyway, still nothing happened. So I took out the drive one more time to see if I could loosen the stepper motor, which I tried with a pair of pliers and my hand. Moving it obviously also moves the drive head. By the way, am I the only one that thinks the drive head looks a bit weird? Very different from, for instance, a five and a quarter inch disc drive. I also put in some oil to see if it would loosen up the motor. And again reinstalled the disk drive into the computer. I repeated the test with the format program, the same sound. I felt around to see if I could feel that motor moving. I didn't. A downside to this type of disk drive is that it's very difficult to see in the drive what it's doing, certainly with those black plastic covers. Also loading the CPM disk did not work. Well, let's say yet. Did not work yet. I also wanted to look up some info on the disk drives. Interestingly, among the three results I get when I googled Hitachi FDD402DB is a post I added to Reddit looking for a service manual. The only other thing I found was a bunch of forum posts discussing the pinouts of the drive. Something that brings me to the option I put a question mark behind, adding a GoTek drive to see if I can load CPM and other programs from that. There is also an adapter PCB available that will convert 50 pins to 34 pins, so maybe I can try that. Also I still want to test the floppy drive cable to see if the problem might lie there, but that is for another video, since I have spent quite some time with the Sanyo MBC3000 already. In that other video I also want to take a closer look at the motherboard and other PCBs in the computer. So that brings me to the last option asking for help. Do you have any tips or tricks that I can try to troubleshoot this computer? Or even better, do you know where I can find info on how to disassemble those Hitachi drives? Please leave those tips in the comment section or send me an email via my website. Let's hope that together we can find a way to load CPM on this amazing computer. Thanks again to those who helped me get the discs and thanks to you for watching.